What's up, guys? Welcome back to King Kraken Sports. Mike here. I know it's been a while since you've seen this beautiful face, or maybe not so beautiful. Uh, the last time you guys saw me, I had a buzz cut and no beard. So it's been a while. I've just been really crazy busy, which is why any of the videos I've been posting up have been iMovie videos, because those are really quick to produce and don't need me to sit in one spot and constantly sit there at a camera. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is we are launching a brand new series today. Take Two Tuesday is what it's going to be called. So either every Tuesday, depending on schedule, might be every other Tuesday. Uh, by the way, find out more uh, in the Instagram account that is linked in the description. You can now officially follow King Kraken Sports on Instagram. Stay up to date. Get behind the scenes type stuff. Uh, you know, maybe early releases of mock drafts, position rankings, whatever you want. There may be that down below. So take two Tuesday. Listen, guys, no one bats a thousand. Everybody's prone to a mistake. Everybody missed on Trent Richardson, this guy included. But I've been doing talent evaluation and scouting in depth since 2014. That was my first draft, the Teddy Bridgewater draft. Um, I've had a lot of hits, including Teddy, uh, before the injury. Uh, and I've had a lot of misses. This is to poke fun, more or less, at my misses. Take Two Tuesday, uh, we're going to go in-depth, we're going to look at what stood out back when that player was prospect, positive and negative, what went wrong in the NFL, and what we can learn from them. So I figured there's no better person to start off the very first Take Two Tuesday than with my biggest miss in the history of King Kraken Sports, this channel from before it was King Kraken Sports, Paxton Lynch, quarterback, Memphis. Now, as I said, I'm not perfect, and Lynch is primary example number one because your boy had him ranked ahead of Carson Wentz in that draft class. Yep. So, and even worse... Lynch was given a first-round grade, top 15 on the big board. Carson Wentz was given a second-round grade, ranked in the 30s. Thankfully, the NFL didn't agree with me, and thankfully, my Philadelphia Eagles didn't agree with me. I'd, we'd definitely be missing a trophy uh, right about now if we had taken uh, good old Paxton. But at the time, there was actually something really intriguing about Paxton Lynch, and part of that was in the 2015 season, Brock Osweiler for the Denver Broncos was winning games in it, in place of the injured Peyton Manning. Um, Size-wise, there was a lot to like about Paxton Lynch. He was six foot seven, two hundred forty-five pounds. Just like how at the time there was a lot to like about Brock Osweiler, six foot eight, two thirty-five. They were both mobile. Lynch had a better arm, so whatever we were going to get with Osweiler in in Denver, you'd get even more of that with with Lynch. He was tearing up the, a the AAC, uh, which was not hard to do because that conference is not known for its defense, but it was impressive nonetheless. And just like Osweiler, he did come out of nowhere, which was one of the negatives was that he was a one-year wonder and no one had heard of him going into that year. But in a draft class like 2016, we're going into the season, nobody liked Christian Hackenberg to begin with, and he's a whole case study onto himself. Cardell Jones wasn't even starting at Ohio State. Jared Goff was unproven. Carson Wentz was an FCS player. Like, Jacoby Brissett was probably the biggest known quantity going into that season. And to see someone like Paxton Lynch really break out caught a lot of people by surprise. And by the end of the season, there were mock drafts slating Paxton Lynch in the top five. Now, like I said, he was a good athlete and he had a big arm. He really graded out. He hit a lot of the measurables quite quite spectacularly. I mean, someone that size at six foot seven, two hundred and forty five pounds, generally those guys aren't running four eight or lower at quarterback. Those are more of your traditional pocket quarterbacks. I mean he went to Denver, and Denver had the carcass of Peyton Manning at 6'6 and 240, and there was no way at any point in his career Peyton Manning ran a 4'8. Um, 
And the fact that his buzz was generated off of the success of another quarterback, like Brock Osweiler at the next level, is quite fascinating because their careers mirror themselves or mirror each other so well. And I'll get back to that in a minute. But the the buzz really came from, yeah, he was playing well, but he can translate well because we have proof of it with Osweiler. Going into draft night, 2016 draft, Goff goes one, Wentz goes two, and then we wait. And what we saw was that throughout the night there were reports that Dallas wanted to trade back up into round one for either Connor Cook. Oh boy, wow, that was... The more I think of it, outside of Wentz and Goff, that class was trash at quarterback. Or Lynch, and the Denver Broncos ultimately made the move up um, after... Brock Osweiler had left for Houston, and Peyton Manning had retired to draft Paxton Lynch, um, 25th overall. Now, Lynch was a project much like Goff was labeled a project, much like Wentz was labeled a project. The idea being that not really none of these guys should start year one. The only one I felt comfortable that you know could start year one was Goff, and so when. Uh, Denver took him, it surprised a lot of people because much like with Josh Allen this year, if you want to go with a bit more of a recent example, there was no quarterback that was established on the roster that he could learn behind. Lynch had to learn behind seventh round draft pick from the previous season, Trevor Simeon. I did not know who Trevor Simeon was uh, at the time of the 2016 draft. So a lot of people assumed that Paxton Lynch was going to come in and take the job. That didn't happen, and Denver was committed to letting um, Lynch sit, and he did. And then he played sporadically, you know, throughout you know, you know his first little you know his first season and into the second season. But it was that second off season where we really started noticing that something was wrong and something was amiss with Paxton Lynch because he still was not able to compete with Trevor Simeon, and, I mean, Trevor Simeon played like trash this past season, Uh, one of the reasons that Denver didn't bring him back and brought in Case Keenum. He just wasn't any good, and if Trevor Simeon was the clear-cut number one Paxton Lynch can't get on the field choice for the Broncos, how bad was Paxton Lynch? And we started hearing... Whispers about it in training camp last year, preseason last year, early regular season last year from uh, in, you know, from analysts like Matt Miller of Bleacher Report that people just really questioned whether Paxton Lynch cared. And I think it started to show a lot because, again, Trevor Simeon really struggled last year and they were not willing to... to <laughs> to really give Lynch any shot, and it all came to a head this past preseason when Chad Kelly was moved ahead of Paxton Lynch on the depth chart, and ultimately, Paxton went bye-bye. He was cut after two years and starting just uh, playing in just four games. My number... Don't remember the exact number because I wasn't keeping a spreadsheet back then, but between 10 and 15, player from 2016, has still not signed an NFL contract with another team, and likely won't. Now, as you can tell, and I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of parallels with Brock Osweiler, and the main one is the mirroring of the careers, because Osweiler capitalized on his season with the Broncos and leading them to the playoffs and ultimately setting the table for Peyton Manning to win them a Super Bowl, that he cashed in big with the contract with the Houston Texans. And everyone thought that he was going to lead the Texans to the promised land with him and Lamar Miller. And obviously that didn't happen. And after a year, he was gone. Because the problem with Osweiler was once he got paid, 
he didn't care. And the problem with Lynch, as reported by Matt Miller, once he got paid, he didn't care. The love of the game was not there. It was a means to an end. He seemed to basically treat it as a way to get money. He knew he was going get, to go get picked high. He had the traits. Once he, once he was picked, he felt he didn't have to put in the effort, and he lost out. So what can we learn? Well, one, be careful of one-year wonders at quarterback. I say that because this year there's another one-year wonder at quarterback, potentially, potentially, in Dwayne Haskins. Now, I would say that literally there's nothing uh, else that connects those two other than potential one-year starters, because we don't know if Haskins is going to go back for a soft, you know, for a junior year. He's crushing his red, redshirt sophomore year. Two, beware the small school quarterbacks. For every Carson Wentz, there's a Paxton Lynch. Three, sometimes that research that isn't available to people like me, but is available to people that work in the media and is available to people that work for NFL teams, don't overlook the small things. Connor Cook was hated by his teammates at Michigan State, wasn't voted captain as a senior. Paxton Lynch was more or less the same thing, apparently. Teammates didn't like him. They thought he was soft. They didn't think he was. He had any leadership skills. Those things matter because when you're the most important player on the field, you need to have someone that's a leader and someone that gives a shit. And it really seems like the big takeaway from the Paxton Lynch fail was that you can't underestimate heart and want. That's going to do it for today, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell another friend. Um, I'm not sure whether next week we're going to go right back into a Take Two Tuesday, uh, so it might be another week, but I already know who the next Take Two Tuesday is. Corey Coleman. Till next time, guys. Take it easy.